There's no end to my talents. Smoking a beautiful Canadian pipe here. Garrick's Wormuloid. Welcome to the Briar Bothy. I... Hey everybody, Dave the Pipe Pirate here on Syndicated Pipe Club, episode two. Today we're going to be uh, talking to the Mandalorian again. And as always, to help me along with that, we have Greg the Badger Piper. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Oh, I forgot to bring your sound on again. How are you doing tonight, Greg? <laughs> doing good. How are you? I'm okay. Things have been interesting. Had a job interview this week. Hmm. It really was just a waste of my time because the guy had decided on somebody he met in the morning. So he was just that's, doing perfunctory interviews because he set the appointments up. Well, that's nice. Uh, gotta love that. Yeah, it was a big old pain in the butt. Let me tell you, because I, you know, I and I get it too. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't uh, think the guy did anything wrong by doing it. It's just one of those things where I'm sitting there going, okay, you know, this was all arranged by app through Indeed. And you could have just messaged me on the app and said, hey, I'm at two of the perfect candidates I'm going to decide through. I need to cancel your interview. And then, that's great. My wife could have gone off and did what she did and have, instead of having to cancel her plans. And yeah. instead of ruining the whole day, because it was literally right in the middle of the day, it was just a pain in the butt. I appreciated he looked at my stuff. It's the first job interview I've had in three years. Yeah, I guess, that. I mean, in a way... You know, even though it was a bit frustrating, at least you probably got some practice in there. Yeah, there was there was that. It wasn't a total waste of time because I did get a practice interview in, and uh, he did he did basically say I was third down on the list. So if the other two guys don't work out, you know, there could still be a call. Yeah, I mean, that that's just kind of the way that I approached uh, approached it when I was uh, job searching. Was just that every opportunity was just, uh, you know, even though I wanted. You know, to get a job, you just had to use each opportunity to kind of learn and adapt for the next interview. Agreed. That's how I found about it. Yeah. Uh, on my end, we have an induction date finally for uh, the, our little one. Uh, should he decide not to come before then? Uh, so when's that? Uh, the 28th. Okay. Yeah, we're not that far yet, but then again, you know, we're due literally a month after that day. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it's it's coming up, and it's I'm still just kind of in disbelief. So is is your wife? Uh, is she a gestational diabetic, or is it just uh, is that the ten day mark after the due date? Yeah, it's just the um, week. Then I think it's the end of week forty. Mm. They they just uh, they have a policy of just not letting it go on for too long after uh, the thirty nine weeks, and you know like we, I'm doing a lot of reading of course right now on, on all this. Well, not really a whole lot. I'm mainly mainly just listening to what my wife has to say about mm -hmm. what she's mm -hmm. reading. I, I'm <laughs> I am doing a little bit of reading, but uh, you know just from what I understand. Uh, you know, some some places are stricter than others uh, about all that stuff. So, she's at least comfortable with uh, what they had to say in their policies. Good, good. Okay. So, what are you smoking tonight? Um, let's see. Uh, this is uh, my GBD Bulldog, which I uh, picked up at the 2018 Chicago Pipe Show uh, from uh, one of the uh, dealers. Uh, it was an estate pipe, uh, and I just, I love this one. Uh, and I love Bulldogs. It's uh, one of my, probably one of my top five shapes. We should probably do an episode about our uh, top five favorite pipe shapes at some point in the future, just uh, just for fun. Um, but uh, 
yeah, uh, just love this pipe. And uh, the tobacco that I'm smoking in it is actually a new blend that I picked up uh, that I got in the mail last week. And it is C and D's uh, Canal Boat. Oh, yeah. I don't know if, uh, yeah. Okay, the light's coming on. Okay. Uh, but it's uh, basically like a, a cube cut burly blend, which I've been interested in, in trying some. Uh, I like burly a lot, so I was interested in trying some cube cut. And uh, it's a cube uh, cube cut early with uh, some black Cavendish and uh, unflavored black Cavendish, as well as some uh, Cyprian Latakia. Mm. And uh, it's just a really nice blend. Oh, <laughs> don't do that too that. often. Yeah, no. Uh, thankfully, though, not too much came out. But uh, yeah, no, I, uh, it's a little bit moist uh, out of the tin, uh, but it doesn't really need all that drying time. It kind of, it's kind of like a crossover English aromatic, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, kind of similar to stuff like East Farthing um, for, from okay. my taste and everything, but not as wet as East Farthing um, and pro- not as sweet or classically uh, like uh, that classic pipe smell but it's still really good and uh like after the first uh like I, i've smoked this blend quite a bit uh this week mm-hmm. uh since, since opening the tin and it's just a nice mixture of sweet with the smokiness from the latakia so i i really recommend it apparently it doesn't have the best reviews on uh like it's not a terribly reviewed on uh, smoking uh, on tobacco reviews, but it's more kind of like middle in the road. But I like it. I like it a lot. I would definitely uh, sell her this blend for me. Good stuff. How uh, about you? What are you smoking? I'm just smoking out of this uh, no name uh, church warden that uh, the president of our pipe club gifted to me a year or so back. And, uh, it's just in with a all sorts blend. You can get it on uh, on smokingpipes.com. It's called it's from uh, Grand Coupier. I think that's the the one. I might be. Mm-hmm. I'm, I know I'm butchering the pronunciation, um, but it's called. I'm blanking now. Boneyard. Mm. It's uh, just English. It's just the light leavings of English blends that were. You know, left over at the end of the, the process, and they just dump it all together, doing all sorts, you know, leftovers jar type deal. It's pretty good. It, it, it's, it, you know, it's what you expect. You don't get the exact same blend each time you order it, but it's nice and cheap. Right. $16 for a pound American. Last time I bought some, and uh, it's a good smoke. If you just want to, it's a good, good, you know, pick it up, smoke it on a regular basis smoke because you can get a lot of it for really cheap right that's cool i mean it, it, you've got the good bones with it anyway like yeah no matter how many times no matter what uh even if the composition of that the one you get isn't quite as uh you know good as the last one you got it oh for sure for sure got it so I know you can see it all, but I, I just glanced over at the at the monitor where the recording's going on, and it's not all visible up there. But uh, I had an empty space in my uh, wall behind me here, and uh, I finally filled it. I'll just bring it out so everybody can see what I put in there, because it's off camera. Well, off camera for the recording, anyway. I have you with me today on set, the Black Panther. I wish you guys could all see it because maybe I'll put a screen a screenshot at the end of the episode where you can see it. I turned the light purple, so it looks like when it's up there in the in the alcove, it looks like uh you know it's been hit with the vibranium and whatnot. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. But uh, as everybody's heard by now, I'm sure Chadwick uh, Boseman uh, died of cancer last week, and I just wanted to put Black Panther up for a couple weeks and uh, as a tribute to him, you know, because. I don't know what they're what Disney's going to do now with the Marvel because like I mean you can't recast him like you can't recast T'Challa like he made the character. They'll probably uh, have Shuri 
uh, to pick up the mantle. That would be my guess. That's my hope as well. There we go. And what else? Oh, new hat. It's a limited run, 50, 51 maybe. Because I'm not sure if the, the guy who commissioned them and, and sold them had one had the one he, he has made in the same run. Or if he has the proof of concept. I don't know, probably that. But prob no more than 51. The Cursed Hat from the Cursed Captain of the Sea of Thieves, Hitbo TC. I'll link to his YouTube channel down below and his Twitch. So if you want to go check out him, see what he does. Uh, I just couldn't resist. It's a, I love hats, and it was a limited run, and it's it's a really beautiful hat. Catches the light from the set well. It's, I gotta I gotta get a hold of the guys myself just so I can say, hey, I just want to order some hats. I don't I don't, I don't care what's on them because it's hard for me to find a hat that fits properly and this one fits very well right so it's one of those ones i'm wearing it tonight just to break it in a little bit but it's this is the one that's going to be kept good it's gonna be my going out hat yeah nothing's worse than finding like a hat that's just fits like a little too tight and you feel like you're uh, always getting oh, a yeah. headache when, whenever you wear it Right now, this is a little, it's a little on the tight side, like, but not enough to. Uh, there's no headache involved. It's one of those flex fits hats, right, where it's got the elastic all the way around, and eventually mm -hmm. it will wear out. <laughs> I have one from a few years ago that I wore until it wore out because it fits so well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, like I have a one hat that I've had since, uh, oh, probably uh, my last year of college that I I took on my honeymoon and everything. And it's still in good shape, uh, you know, and I uh, like wearing it when I work out on the yard and everything. And it's just one of those, like, uh, you know, I wouldn't say one size fits all, but, you know, fits fits my head pretty well. It's kind of uh, broken in from all the years of wearing it and everything. Mm -hmm. I'll probably never get rid of it. And we do have some housekeeping to go through today. Okay. We have subscribers on YouTube. Uh, look from the Which look is of amazing. It. Uh, where did it go? I had it. Oh, there they are. YouTube changed the format on their channels again. Okay. We have eight subscribers. Now, six of them have kept their information private, so we will respect that. If you don't want your information out there, we will not even try to put it out. Like That's totally up to you. Totally your call. For sure. But the two that didn't were Phil from the Briar Report. He was one of our first subscribers. I think he subscribed back still when the uh, channel just had the trailer on it, what, two weeks ago. And another YTPC is subscribed is Yardism. So Yardism's on our channel as well, looking at things. So I hope everybody's. Oh no! My white light went out. <laughs> I'm uh. looking a little dark. So I'm going to have to change some things up here. But anyway, Yardism, thank you for subscribing. Phil, thank you for subscribing. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, come on. Now that the lighting's all wrong. Hold on, everybody. i got to fix this. Uh, Should have charged that light before I turned it on. We're experiencing technical difficulties. That doesn't look as good now, but it'll do. Bummer. Oh well. I lost the green. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with this. Oh, I got one more thing to do. Hold on, I'll be right back. Yeah, that should fill things out a little bit better. Yeah. Just went and turned the light on in the in the main room. there not as much fun but it'll do now you can see you get a better view of the hat though yeah no it was a uh, hard to like if you hadn't have, uh if you hadn't pointed out the little logo at the top i probably wouldn't have seen it earlier yeah okay 
So now that the technical difficulties are out of the way, it seems that we're having some every week so far, but get it, get it we'll get it we'll get it ironed out. Of course, it's a working progress. Mhm. That's why I keep like that's why I was sitting going, I'm just going to handle it like I was live cuz, you know, why not? <laughs> For sure. You never know, we may take this thing live someday. Yeah, I can see that. But anyway, so the main focus of the episode today is episode two of The Mandalorian. So what were your thoughts? I thought it was exciting. Like it's, uh, I wrote some notes and I forgot to take a look at them before we hopped on. But, um, <laughs> you know, the first thing that uh, I think really caught my attention throughout the whole episode was just, uh, I liked the music that they used mm -hmm. and uh like the the scene where the, the mandalorian's going into that cave you know, to take on uh the monster for the week uh and it was just this uh synthy music mm -hmm. uh and it kind of remind me of uh a little bit of like you know the flash episode when flash was a uh, uh you know kind of uh like passed out and in his dreams and everything taking on blood work and had kind of like that like horror kind of like synthy soundtrack it wasn't necessarily horror but it had this nice build and tension and another thing that i really noticed with this episode was just uh i appreciate that the show allows everything to breathe and not fill it all with dialogue. You know, I think maybe kind of, uh, it's something I've noticed with going from uh, a CW show with The Flash, which is very chatty, to uh, to this, where it's, there's a lot more quiet moments and more tension. And that makes, uh, you know, the dialogue that is said all that more important. For sure, for sure. The, the dialogue, it, it's there, and there's not much of it. So when there, it is being said, you're paying attention to it, because when they when they talk, it's usually something important. Mm -hmm. And it's something that may come back up down the road. And, uh, and also while watching it, uh, another thing that really kind of, came to my mind was that uh, it there were th moments and things in this episode that kind of reminded me of like you know like they could easily make a Mandalorian video game or uh, or because th there were like things that were like uh, that really felt like uh, they'd be perfect for a video game like when he's climbing up uh, the Jawa's uh, you know sand ship Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, on the rope and kind of like moving like left to right to kind of like avoid things and and shooting at the Jawas as they pop out. Like it reminded me of something that you could have done. Like even with like some of the 16-bit games. Like I, mm -hmm. I kind of like uh, I don't know, like the uh, the Lion King uh, from uh, on Super Nintendo, where like you're running towards the screen and avoiding like the rocks and everything there's some people obviously there's going to be people that are like oh, i i have no idea what he's talking about right now but uh, just google it <laughs> on or uh, watch it on youtube <coughs> but um yeah that that really reminded me of something that you would see out of the video game and then another thing that uh i i really noticed was like just that whole encounter with uh with the the rhino kind of like monster like yeah, from going horn. into yeah the mud horn uh like going into the cave and just kind of like slowly like plodding through through it and there's this tension that's building up and then the actual fight feels more of like a, a boss encounter and uh with, with it being kind of like high stakes and everything so those were some of the things that kind of like immediately came to my mind. I felt like in terms of 
what was going on in the episode. You didn't have like, really, there's not a whole lot that, that happens. You know, it's the Mandalorian, you know, realizes he parked in a, a bad neighborhood and mm-hmm. that his love shouldn't have left his uh, ship unlocked and they, their jaw was raided it for parts and he has to basically get those parts back if he wants to leave the planet. And it's just the story of him uh, getting the, those parts back. And I, I, but even, even with it being kind of simplistic in that sense, like I don't say simplistic in a uh, negative sense. It, in a way it was kind of refreshing that we didn't have like a billion different plot things going on. And, and they allowed this, you know, simple story to be told cleanly from beginning to end mm-hmm, without mm-hmm. any sort of like uh, filler in it. Yeah. Yeah. I can absolutely see that. And uh, that's one of the, that's one of the things that I have a little bit of an advantage, of course, because I'm like, actually watching through for the third time now to, mm-hmm. to do these episodes, which I don't care. It's a great show. I'll probably watch it three or four more times before uh, before I'm done with it. But uh, the simplicity of it will continue on through. It it's one of those things where they're, they're doing Star Wars right here in the, in this. N- not that uh, I mean to open a can of worms for everybody who does who thinks Star Wars has been done right all the way through. Just in my opinion, they are definitely going about Star Wars the right way here with The Mandalorian. And I know I'm not the only one with that opinion. But yeah, like the Jawas, they, they were they were fun to see this episode. We, this is probably the, the most we've seen interaction with Jawas throughout all of the movies. Mm-hmm. Like they've been around since the original trilogy, but, you know, they're relegated mostly to the background. And, you know, it's just little, they're little parts they're there for a few minutes and then they're gone but they were a big focus of the the episode uh, this week with the battle on the sand crawler like you said having to go and negotiate right with the Jawas in order to get the parts back something we only see briefly in A New Hope because that whole sequence of Jawas and um, Owen Lars only takes like what five minutes at most mm-hmm so it's not very long at all. No, not at all. Yeah, it fleshes out the Star Wars universe in a nice way. Mm-hmm. Because you're always kind of propelling forward in the movies. And I like the fact that it lingers and spends time at places. Yeah, and it, it will really, continue to do so. Yeah, and I'm really enjoying that. And... Again, I would say this is easily like up there with uh, the original trilogy for mm-hmm. uh, for me so far, just because it just it captures so much of what I think of and enjoy about the Star Wars movies, uh, the, the original trilogy that I just haven't really felt in that I never felt in the prequels, which. You know they're their own thing, and you know that's great and, and fine, and that's and it's not a bad thing. Um, but especially with everything that I've seen from the sequels, like it just it gets back to basics in the best way possible. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think what what they what they've tried to do here as best they can, anyway, and, and I think it would work. Um, when when you add all the episodes together, I mean, they're not all the same length. Some are a little bit longer, some are a little bit shorter. But when you come out of it, you have, I'd say, if you were to run them all together, just like watch them back to back and binge it like you like you would like anything else once it's out, typically, mm-hmm. um, you end up having a three or four hour long Star Wars feature out of this when it's all said and done. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't make this into a movie. And I think it shows the strength of the new way that they're doing television. 
with the, fat, mm-hmm. the, the new Netflix era of uh, television with things that aren't hindered by your traditional beats of uh, here's our intro, what we're going to get in before the first commercial break. Here's the you know, next thing that we're going to do before the next commercial break and so on and so forth. Yeah, there's a little bit of that because they do cut to an intro and whatnot, but it's not long. It's there's no commercial. That's the other thing. Like, there's no commercial breaks. You start, you finish. Mm-hmm. Done. Like, even that's where the the new era of television and the way things are going to be pr- produced for online services from for now until something in the distant future or the, the semi distant future changes how we consumer entertainment again Mm -hmm. um the commercials are going to be like during a feature like this when they're on a service like disney plus or uh, netflix or heck even on prime amazon prime service you're not going to see them filmed with commercial breaks in mind because you're already paying for the service so you don't need those commercials you're paying to produce the product the product at that point Right. If you want to watch commercials, go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Because once people start monetizing, you get commercials, whether you want them or not. Right. Fortunately, we're not at that point yet, so we don't have to worry about it. Yes, thank you. I'm enjoying the freedom from uh, commercials at the moment. Yeah, um, I I really enjoyed the interactions too between the Mandalorian and um, I, I'm really I, I'm blanking on his name. The Quill is a Quill. What the Quill? Yeah, uh, just uh, the the mutual respect that they kind of have for each other, um, even with uh, you know the Mandalorian kind of even offering him like a place on his ship if he mm-hmm. wanted as crew and uh just that whole interaction and everything it uh you know we get the seeds of a little bit of a backstory w- with with quill and i don't know if they uh, expand that or not um in, in later episodes but uh it's enough to leave you like the hook of okay you know I want to know a little bit more about this character. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you get that a lot with the characters they introduce. Like, you didn't get too much of that in episode one, but you know he's got to go back to these characters anyway. So, because he's got to bring the the baby Yoda in for the bounty. So, he's got to go back in and, and deal with some of these people. So, backstory is coming in future episodes with the characters we've already met in episode one and characters down the road in in episodes three through eight. Yeah. I'm starting to see that some with a, cause I made it about halfway through uh, episode three and uh, you're you're definitely seeing a lot of uh, a culmination of everything that was started in episode one. Mm Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, overall, of course, was... yeah, no, it was good. And, and of course, you know, like, uh, obviously, you know, the surprises are more for me right now than, mm-hmm. than it is for you, but, oh, definitely. Uh, you know, like, uh, seeing, uh, the baby Yoda character use its power for the first time with the force to, to stop the mud horn in its tracks and, uh, You know, obviously, that you know, it shows that there's uh, even though the Mandalorian's probably going to be more of uh, the one doing the protecting in this relationship. You know, we still have some tantalizing glimpses of what could be in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't wait for season two to roll out this year. As I think it rolls out in November. Just after my daughter's due to be here, so 
don't know if we'll be talking about that one right away, but right. Cause we'll both be dealing with new babies at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so that, that'll be interesting, but it, it should still, it'll, uh, give us more stuff to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure it'll be fun for you too, to be able to talk about those episodes as they come out. Oh yeah. With, uh, yeah it'll be fun. fresh thoughts rather than kind of, uh, retreading a bit. Well, it's okay. I mean, I enjoyed it when I watched it weekly. I'm hoping they're going to do the weekly release again like they did uh, with season I think so. one. I think, I think so. I think it was uh, a wise decision on their part to do it on a weekly basis. I uh, I don't think the, the whole weekly, uh, the immediate binge of everything, you know, it was... I don't think that it's good for like a, a new show to do that. And I think uh, Netflix is kind of changing that stuff with uh, like with Stranger Things and everything now kind of like I think Stranger Things will be doing it kind of like on a weekly basis as well. Um, at least they did with uh, the Great British Baking Shows last season last year. But uh, I, I think that's the it's just the smarter way to do it. And I like the fact that it's uh, there's also like no breaks, kind of like with the flash and everything, because that that definitely is a momentum killer a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, like with with Disney Plus or even the stuff that airs uh, with the, the Netflix originals, you don't get that that break. They all come out either all at once or once a week, like clockwork. Once mm-hmm. they start. They have them all in the can. They release them as they go. It's all the the production's all done by the time we see them. It's mm-hmm. not like uh, not like regular production like The Flash or um, NCIS or any of the shows that are out there right now that are still working under the old format where you go you got to be there and especially now with the uh, with COVID rules in place too. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's going to be fun to try to work around. For sure. But. Uh, we will we will certainly see okay. yeah definitely. well um i th- actually think we got that pretty much covered i was like, like 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 i said last week we're not here to do an in-depth on the episodes we're just here to talk you want in depth there's plenty of places that are out there covering the mandalorian and star wars and all that stuff if you want something like that listen to us absolutely but then if you want something more, there are plenty of things out there. Just check YouTube, check uh, your podcast provider. Um, you can find somebody if you want to do the in-depth geeking out. Well, one last thing. I, I uh, enjoy, enjoyed the whole, the grossness of like uh, the opening of the mud oh, horns the egg. egg. And the, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think any fun. of that, any of that, uh, yolk made it into their mouths <laughs> it just kind of just got all over their hands and everything i don't know maybe that's uh maybe that's your thing was, i mean it looked like they were having a party there that was their keg i mean mm-hmm. sure if that's that's your thing but wow they were having a party when they brought that egg in for maybe. sure i love too the fact that it was like uh hairy looking instead of smooth and yeah uh, like like a normal egg that's a good that's what i'm looking for that the, the interesting that that's the subversions of expectations that i'm looking for yeah so um yeah so there there you have it that's our our thoughts on star wars for this week Our, our pipes for this week nothing nothing too spectacular this week but if you want to continue to follow us throughout the coming weeks you can always find me at dr allen 201 on the twitters and the instagrams and to wherever I happen to be on social media or gaming or anything. Greg, how about you? Yes, yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at the underscore Badger Piper and on Instagram as the Badger Piper. And if you want to just send us a good old fashioned email, you can get a hold of us at reverse flash time at gmail.com. And yeah, if you. Uh, subscribe on our on our podcast and have anything that you want to want to say 
in regards to what we're talking about these days, please send us an email because, you know, YouTube's great because we can get basically instant feedback. But if you're listening on the podcast side of things, we need to hear from you too. So yeah. please give us an email. Let us know. We'll be glad to uh, talk about what you have to say. Yeah. And if you're watching on uh, YouTube, uh, leave a comment and, uh, and hit the like button. And subscribe. We're doing YouTube stuff now for sure. We got to do the. We got to do all the things. This is all new new territory for us. Yeah, smash that like button. Subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified of when we upload, which will be on Wednesdays. That's the day I can do it. So it'll always be yep. Wednesday. Anyway, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Have a good time. Good smokes. Good entertainment TV viewing. Have a good night.